Hi, I'm John Cochran. I'm a senior fellow here at the Hoover Institution at Stanford. My academic writing is mostly about macroeconomics, monetary economics, where does inflation come from, finance, why do stock prices move. I dabble a bit in things like uh, healthcare, how to make insurance systems work better. And I also write about public policy in general. I keep a blog up called The Grumpy Economist, which is a humorous view on uh, all sorts of public policy from a free market perspective. So what's the problem with economic growth? The answer is there isn't enough of it. Um, now you might think, what do I need more stuff in my garage for? First of all, economic growth helps the less fortunate as well as those of us with too much stuff in our garage. Also, it's not like the weather. So the weather isn't as good as it could be, especially if you're not in Palo Alto. But I have a strong feeling that there's something we can do about economic growth. So it's a, a problem that can be fixed, uh, unlike the weather. And also, it's beyond more stuff. More economic growth means uh, better health, uh, longer lives. We can, we can invest in, um, in health as, as well as stuff. It means a stronger military, if you think, uh, or, or a stronger nation, um, stronger, safer nation. It means environmental uh, cleanup. You have to be able to afford a clean environment. Uh, it means paying off our government's debts, Social Security, Medicare, all that sort of stuff. So more economic growth is key to all, a whole bunch of things. Uh, it's the key to welfare in a general sense in our society. Uh, and I think it's something that isn't growing fast enough and that we can do something about. You may say, but we are growing. What's the difference between 2% growth and 3% growth? Little percentages don't seem like something to get that excited about. Well, there's the magic of compounding. Uh, imagine we wait 25 years. At 2% growth, that makes us 64% better. Well, who wouldn't like a 64% raise? That's pretty nice. 3% growth for the same 25 years, you get 112% better off. You double your standing of standard of living and you double the increase. That's the magic of compounding. There's a big difference between 2% and 3%. The difference between 64% more and 112% more. Uh, that's a lot of money, both for your own personal well-being and for our nation as a whole to be able to do all the things we want to do. Won't we eventually run out of resources if we keep growing? No, I don't think so. Uh, remember, our economy is moving more and more to a service economy. We're not just going to, by growth, we're not just going to give you 10 or 20 cars in, uh, in a generation. Uh, we're going to give you iPhones, movies. We're going to give you healthcare services. Um, as you move to a service economy, you use a lot less resources. As a joke version, imagine that someday um, every, all stuff becomes free. Porsches are, are $10, but uh, you earn $100,000 rearranging your neighbor's flowers and he earns $100,000 doing your taxes for you. Those are services. Those are valuable, especially uh, extensions in health, environment, uh, stuff like that. Those are things of great value. They count as economic growth. If we're choosing not to buy the Porsches, that gives us a sense of what they're worth to us. That's what growth is going to look like. And, and don't belittle it. Uh, those kinds of services, once we have basic needs satisfied, contribute immensely to uh, people's happiness and well-being. So everyone's worried about automation and will robots displace us and there won't be any jobs anymore. Let's remember how many times this has happened in the past. The tractor is invented. Oh my gosh, the 70% of Americans who work on the farm will be all out of jobs. Turned out they moved to the factories. The car has been invented. What's going to happen to all those horseshoers and teamsters and, and carriage builders? Well, it turns out they got better jobs too. Automation is tools. Humans use tools to enhance their productivity. There's always going to be plenty for people to do. Uh, I don't think we have to worry that this time, finally, after all the other times in which new tools made us richer, it's going to all make us poorer. Now, one of the major things slowing growth down is regulation. And one of the things we need to do to get growth going again is to rethink our regulatory state. Now, you may wonder, doesn't that mean dirtier air, less safety, uh, more unstable banks? No. The question is not to get rid of regulation. The question is to regulate smarter and more efficiently. There's a lot our economy can do to keep all the safety we need but not have everything get in the way of the process of economic growth. 
Most regulation is there to keep existing businesses going and to stop new competitors. We need regulation that keeps the safety part, but lets new disruptive competitors come in and give us the economic growth that they can provide. So why are we growing so slowly? The U.S. grew quite well after World War II, but starting around the turn of the century, growth has slowed down, primarily growth in productivity, how much each of us makes. Why? Well, economists disagree on that. One school of thought thinks we've kind of run out of good ideas. Another school of thought thinks we're just perpetually deficient demand and we need more stimulus. As I look at it, I see that the sclerosis of the regulatory and administrative state is really causing us problems. It's just so hard to get anything done these days. I imagine they built the Transcontinental Railroad by hand in four years. Now you can't even get the beginning permits submitted in four years.